I think we should be able to reproduce this and I have something interesting planned for that. So let's get into it, shall we? So this is a video I found which I thought was pretty cool and it looks kind of simple too. So there are basically two planes here with some bumps and some texture work done on it. So we have this transparent orb here. We have two light sources, the red one and the plain bluish white one. We have a good foggy kind of mist here and it's a cycles render. I think we should be able to reproduce this and I have something interesting planned for that. So let's get into it, shall we? So our first element would be the base plane and the plane above it. So for that we'll be creating one single plane. Or uh, let's go ahead and add a plane, scale it to the factor of 8, here it is. Let's go to the edit mode and subdivide, subdivide into 100 cuts. Let's go back to the object mode, control A to apply all transforms. Now we need to add a modifier. Let's go ahead and add a displace modifier. So here's the displace modifier. Let's click new and here and under the type we'll go with distorted noise. Let's bring up the size a little bit. Let's go to the colors and here you can play with the contrast. You can see how uh, changes in the contrast is affecting the plane. So we'll go with uh, something like this. Let's go ahead and add another modifier that would be subdivision surface. Here it is. Let's bring it on the top under the viewport. Change it to 2. Right click the object and shade smooth. So we have the base plane ready. Now to add the plane above it, all we have to do is duplicate this and rotate it in X or Y uh, axis. So we'll do that uh, by clicking Alt D that duplicates the plane and let's go ahead and rotate this in Y axis to 180. So there we have some variation to work with. Now let's go ahead and place our camera that would be Shift A camera here it is. Let's bring it. So this is the camera view right now. Let's change it to 90. Here it's zero. So here's the camera. I think this view is okay for now. You can place, uh, you can change the placement of the planes accordingly the way you want it to be. Uh, I'm gonna let it be for now. Now let's work on the shading part to give that solid lava kind of uh, texture. So let's select the plane. Let's go to shading. Now we are going to need a couple of nodes for this. So first of all, let's add new. This would assign a principled BSTF to it. Here it is. Let's go ahead and add a new bump node. That would be shift bump here it is let's place it here we are going to need a color ramp as well so shift a search color ramp here it is we are going to need noise texture as well so shift a search noise texture here it is let's click ctrl t that would give us the additional mapping and texture coordinate and under the texture coordinate change from generate it to object object goes to vector the normal of bump goes to the normal of principal bstf the color of color ramp goes to the height of bump the noise texture fac goes to the color ramp fac and now we are starting to see some pattern appearing here right we of course don't need the white color so let's go to the principal bstf let's change the base color to something darker i think now it's coming together now this noise texture node is very important here. You can observe the changes happening uh, when I change the values for scale, uh, the detail and the distortion. Pretty interesting, right? So the idea is to create that solid lava kind of texture. For that, I'll just increase the scale a little bit and let's go ahead and see work on the detail. I think this looks good and the distortion. We don't need it to be a lot distorted. I think this looks good. So to give some highlight to this plane, we are going to do some. We are going to do a couple of things. So all you have to do is uh, just duplicate the color ramp. Here's the duplicate color ramp. Duplicate the noise texture as well. Here it goes. So here's the duplicated color ramp. The color of color ramp here goes to the roughness of principal BSTF, 
and the noise texture FAC goes to the color ramp FAC and the mapping vector here goes to the vector of noise texture. And now we can play around with the details here. You're starting to see some highlights appearing. Let me just uh, bring this down. So if I play around with the detail, you get to see some highlights appearing on the surface. So I think uh, I'm going to go with this. The scale is okay as well. The distortion. This looks okay. I think we are done with the shading part for the plane. This looks good to me. So not to bore you guys, uh, I've gone ahead and added some elements here. So basically, let me change it to EV. That would be easy for us to see. So basically, I've gone ahead and added three area lights. One is the yellow one here. One is the pinkish one. And one is the plain old white. So as you can see, these are the three area lights. And after that, to add, to give this a uh, foggy kind of feel to it, I've gone ahead and added a cube. So if I scroll back a little bit, you'll be able to see that. So yeah, it's, uh, you can see the cube here. This is the cube we are talking about. Let me just uh, go back to render view. So yeah, this is the cube. So I've just added a cube here and which uh, covers the overall area we are working with and i've just selected the cube and under the shading you're able to see it's basically just a normal principled volume so that causes uh, that gives out this foggy kind of feel to it let's go back to the render mode and you can play around with the density here to increase or decrease the overall fog here so as you can see it's increasing i'm going to keep it to 0.1 that should suffice let's go back to layout so there's this another element which I added, which is the spear. And if you see the render output for that, I've made it transparent. It's pretty simple to do. So all you have to do is use the built-in transparent BSDF node connected to shader. Principal BSDF goes to the shader and the mixed shader output goes to the surface uh, for this sphere. And that's how it's uh, coming out to be. And that's pretty much it for the scene setup. Now you can play around with the camera here. You can animate the camera. You can get some pretty cool looking renders out of this. So do give it a try and let me know how it works out for you. Okay. So not to bore you guys, uh, I've gone ahead and added some elements here. So basically, let me change it to EV. That would be easy for us to see. So basically, I've gone ahead and added three area lights. One is the yellow one here. One is the pinkish one and one is the plain old white so as you can see these are the three area lights and after that to add to give this a uh, foggy kind of feel to it i've gone ahead and added a cube so if i scroll back a little bit you'll be able to see that so yeah it's, uh, you can see the cube here this is the cube we are talking about let me just uh, go back to render view so yeah this is the cube so i've just added a cube here and which uh, covers the overall area we are working with and i've just selected the cube and under the shading you're able to see it's basically just a normal principled volume so that causes uh, that gives out this foggy kind of feel to it let's go back to the render mode and you can play around with the density here to increase or decrease the overall fog here so as you can see it's increasing i'm going to keep it to 0.1 that should suffice Let's go back to layout. So there's this another element which I added, which is the spear. And if you see the render output for that, I've made it transparent. It's pretty simple to do. So all you have to do is use the built-in transparent BSDF node connected to shader. Principal BSDF goes to the shader and the mixed shader output goes to the surface uh, for this sphere. And that's how it's uh, coming out to be. And that's pretty much it for the scene setup. Now you can play around with the camera here. You can animate the camera. You can get some pretty cool looking renders out of this. So do give it a try and let me know how it works out for you. Okay.
I think the foggy volume is increasing the total render time, but I was able to get some renders with some variations. And I thought maybe we could use these renders in one of the other playlists I try to work on, uh, that is wordplay sessions. The wordplay sessions are basically some of the pieces of writings I've written a long time back. So this is an attempt to revive both of them, my words and the wordplay session playlist itself. So please do give it a watch and let me know how you feel about it. Would absolutely love to hear your thoughts. But that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.